One of the easiest mistakes to make when planting a garden is to think that just because it looks good now means it's going to look good in a few months time. Gardens are constantly changing throughout the year. So what do we need to do to ensure that when we look out the window in four months time, we like what we see? Well, stay tuned because by the end of this video, you'll have all the answers you need. Countless times over the years I've been surprised by professional landscapes and sometimes even garden designers choosing the plants for a garden by going down to the garden centre or nursery and picking out a load of stuff they like. The reason this never ever works is quite simple. Garden centres and, and nurseries alike are there to sell plants. So what are they going to use their shelf space for? They're going to show the plants that look good at that time. In a world of commerce where space is money, they're not going to put spring flowering hellebores out in October when there's a risk that they're not going to look at their best. They won't be in flower. You're never going to see those and think, oh, I really want those in my garden. No, you're going to pick what looks good at that time. And the problem with this is you're going to then pick out a load of plants that you like the look of, get them home, get them in the garden. It's going to look great to start with, but in a few weeks time, you're going to be looking out. The flowers are going to have gone over. Some of the leaves might have dropped or the plants might have died back. You might even think that some of them have died. Um, and in a couple of months time, the garden's going to look very dull and boring at that point. So what do we do? How do we get around this? Well, you've got a couple of options. Uh, one way is you could go to the garden centre, visit every month for uh, the next couple of years and gradually build your garden up, planting a little bit of a time. Um, that can work, but it takes quite a bit of time and energy. And to be quite frank, we can be more professional about this and design a plan that gives texture, colour and interest throughout the seasons and looks great. Now before we start rattling off lots of plant names and varieties, I think we need to consider what do we mean when we say year round interest? A lot of the time when my clients ask for year round interest, what they really mean is I don't want the garden to look particularly dull in winter time. Uh, here in the UK, it can often be very wet, a bit cold, drab, certainly very dull a lot of the time. And although winter flowering plants are gonna be a nice easy solution, there is a limit in terms of the palette that's available and so we need to think a little bit more carefully about what we mean and how we're going to create interest at that time. We need to consider what's going to look good. When we look out the kitchen window, what's going to lift our spirits? When I think about um, what looks good, I'm thinking structure, I'm thinking interest in terms of perhaps frost covered uh, topiary or maybe grasses glittering in the snow you know we're thinking multi-stem shrubs we're thinking colors of stems we're thinking bark there's so much more to a garden uh, than simply flowers you only have to look at the christmas cards with gardens on them especially from the likes of the rhs whether it be uh, wisley or somewhere like that and, and see the sort of things that we like to see architectural hardy foliage, snow-covered topiary, you know, woody structure. These are all things that are going to incorporate uh, within our garden that are going to make it look good. And then spring, summer, autumn. We need to think about these seasons and what's going to grab our interest and look good at that time of year. But it doesn't have to rely solely on flowers. And I want us to think about what makes a garden a garden. In my opinion, this is what stops us from going to the garden centre and just simply buying up the whole garden in one go. We're talking change. We want to see shoots coming up in the spring. We want to see fireworks in early summer. Um, we can then go into perhaps hazy, more relaxed textures and, and, and colours as we get into later summer. And then we want some vibrant reds, golds, yellows, you know, in the autumn time. Um, and as I say, good, strong structure throughout the winter. As I'm filming this, we're well into autumn here in the UK and I can look out of my back window and we've got this wooded area right at the bottom of the garden and the colours are truly stunning. Now I think the best way we can tackle this in this video here is to take each season one by one. So we're going to start with spring, my favourite season, uh, such full of promise and, and beginnings, uh, you know summer's going to be round the corner. Um, and so the obvious place to start is with green shoots coming through that snow or frost covered ground, perhaps a little bit cold and wet. We're thinking bulbs and uh, one of the first bulbs to think about really are snowdrops, galanthus. Um, these are a real great doer, um, you know, they're going to naturalise and, and, and spread over time. So we need to get these in the ground as soon as we can. Um, Closely followed after snowdrops, I would suggest probably crocus. We've got some really vibrant purples, blues, pinks, you know, these are a great one to go for. 
Um, there's lots of other bulbs that we can use and uh, choose for the garden. Um, the obvious ones we've got perhaps for the springtime are going to be tulips. Um, uh, then we've obviously got daffodils. Um, daffodils you might go for uh, certain varieties that come particularly early. February's gold, uh, early bride, these are great options. Um, now I'll be honest and say I'm not the biggest fan of daffodils. Um, I think they look great in the wild, especially when they're en masse, um, but it really depends on your garden. Um, some of the white varieties we've got in our garden down by the trees, my wife loves them. Um, certainly uh, they've got their place. Hellebores. These are another great early springtime plant that uh, are going to work well. Um, tend to use Orientalis quite a lot. Um, they're great in shade, um, especially stinking hellebores can tolerate quite deep shade. Um, so again, underplanting these or putting them in a shady corner mixed with ferns or um, they're going to come up later in the year or, or hostas again for the summer. Um, they can be great and the foliage of uh, hellebores can look really good in early summer. Um, so definitely one to think about. Um, cutting back the foliage in early spring will allow you to see the, the, the flower heads and these are going to um, seed and, and pop everywhere so they will spread naturally just like the snowdrops will. Now in early spring uh, we often rely on some of the structure that comes through from winter and I'm going to talk about that more when we get on to winter planting but as the season goes on one of the great things about spring is the blossom, tree blossom. Um, I've got a uh, flowering uh, plum tree, an ornamental plum, that's great and certainly some of the cherries are stunning. In Japan Hanami is an event where a lot of the Japanese people flock to see this blossom on the trees uh, in early spring, picnicking underneath. Um, and here in the UK, so long as we don't get a late frost, this can look really great. Um, magnolias as well here within the UK are great. Again, we need to avoid that late frost, hopefully. The last couple of years, unfortunately, um, the uh, magnolias have been hit and, and, and the petals have turned brown very quickly, but um, these great big exotic flowers can look really stunning um, in springtime. Now, when it comes to each season, I think it's also important when uh, designing a garden to think about how we're gonna use the garden in that season. In the springtime, it's probably a little bit cool a little bit darker in the evenings uh, than it is in the summer so we're probably not into barbecue season yet it's going to be more about walking around the garden at the weekends but actually a lot of the time it's going to be looking out from the house into the garden and in March time, certainly, uh, I think I'm probably still driving to work in the dark, coming home, it's getting dark at least. Um, and so garden lighting is, is one of the features that I think is really important to think about when it comes to um, seasonal interest. Um, if you are thinking about designing some lighting within your garden, you might want to check out my video, uh, link above there on how to design garden lighting. Um, but garden lighting can certainly add, create a lot of interest. We're talking shadows, you know, with reflections, especially with these blossom trees or perhaps the magnolias to uplight. Those can really uh, give give uh, quite an effect. Um, or it might be some lighting within the spring borders where we're picking up some of those colours that we've been talking about. Structural trees and shrubs, multi stems, for instance, or, or, or woody shrubs, where we can create shadows that might bounce off a wall or a hedge. These can look great, and it doesn't have to be planting either. It could be a pergola, archways, some sort of structural form that's within the garden that gets picked up by this lighting. Um, the effects can be quite dramatic. And then again, as we move on through the spring season, uh, and the risk of freezing perhaps has gone, water. Water can be a great feature within the garden and create lots of sound and movement that can uh, grab your interest even when you're inside the house looking out. Now it doesn't have to be quite as dramatic as perhaps one of the fountains in St. Peter's Square in Rome. Um, it can be a lot simpler. It might be a, just a water blade or maybe a, a, a globe that, where the water runs over it. And again, lighting can be used here to create an even more dramatic effect at night. Now I keep promising to give you a video on water features and it is on its way, I promise. Uh, water is something that's a, re a real favourite of mine. I just want to do it justice. So if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do so because that's coming very soon. So to summarise for springtime, we're talking early flowering, bulbs, pushing through the ground, we're talking lighting, we're talking water, we're talking blossom in the trees. Next, we're going on to summertime, and summertime is often considered the easiest season, and sure, there's a lot of plants out there that are gonna be in flower, but I want us to think a little bit more carefully about the flowering season here, and talk a little bit about succession planting. Now, succession planting is talked a lot about when it comes to growing fruit and vegetables. Um, however, within um, ornamental gardening, what I'm talking about is, is following on plants uh, that are flowering with other plants that are just starting to flower. So, for instance, as an example, we might have alliums in early summer 
dying out, uh, sort of going over, and then we've got Salvius coming up and getting into gear very soon after that. Um, follow that up with Crocosmias that are budding up and ready to go in late summer. Um, it's better that we perhaps break summer down into early summer, midsummer, and late summer, and, and, and plant accordingly. And then at this point, we also want to think a little bit about maintenance, you know, uh, and how much we can tolerate. Um, clearly, uh, with a lot of perennials, you're going to be doing a lot of cutting back, a lot of clearing and cleaning, deadheading, that kind of thing. So if your tolerance is a little bit lower, we might go down the flowering shrub route as well. Um, Choisias, you know, we can go for uh, Sambucus, uh, Hydrangeas, Sorbaria. You know, there's lots of flowering shrubs that are going to flower at different seasons. And then if we interplant these around with some perennials, like I say, Sal, as echinacea later on in the summer um, this is going to give us a great effect with a little bit less maintenance than if we go for a full cottage garden and at this point I want to talk about grasses too you know grasses for the summertime um, grasses are a real good value plant you know and and we're going to talk more about good value plants as we go on into autumn and winter but grasses that are going to be putting on new foliage in the spring late springtime seed heads are going to be popping up uh, in the summertime um, and some of them for instance uh, miscanthus or um, Calamagrostis, these are going to go well on into the autumn as well. Um, one of my favourite combinations that I use quite a lot is Steepa tenuissima, a really um, fluffy um, sort of grass. Um, with planting behind it some quite vibrant planting such as salvias, echinops, echinacea, um, uh, you know these, these 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 vibrant colours coming through behind the fluff of the of, of the the grasses and these grasses are going to then go well on into the autumn and winter time. Um, Steep attenuissima looks great in the winter time when it's covered in frost. It glitters as it moves in the wind. So um, definitely one to think about. You can also get some good height with grasses as well. You know, steeper gigantia can get up to sort of six, seven foot high, but yet you can still see through it. I plant this one quite a lot um, in some of the gardens that we design, and having it at the forefront means that you can then see through it um, to the rest of the garden, but it's going to give you that real dramatic height that you might want for the garden. Now with the summer in full flow, uh, you're probably going to be using the garden quite a bit um, and that might be in the form of entertaining, you know, dining spaces. We do a lot of living areas with outdoor kitchens, for instance, um, lounging areas. It might be kids play areas, you know, and some of these uh, elements can look really good too, you know, looking out onto a, onto a really stylish outdoor kitchen with dining space is something that I, I, I think looks great, you know, but we do need to think carefully at this point about how that's going to look in the autumn and winter that really beautiful outdoor kitchen might need covering over in the winter time and if it's got a great big tarpaulin type cover uh, on it um, and this is blocking your view to the rest of the garden when you're looking out from the kitchen for instance um, that's not going to be great in the winter time so carefully designing these elements can really add to the summer interest but we just need to be careful that it's not going to detriment the, the the other seasons as well so to summarize summer we're thinking careful thoughts when it comes to succession planting, we're thinking grasses, and then we're thinking outdoor living. And then we get through to autumn, and many people love autumn, and for good reason. To be honest, I'm slightly hesitant about autumn. I think it's because I run a landscaping company, and so um, the idea of this perhaps wetter, colder months uh, being less productive uh, perhaps holds me back, but the colours and the vibrancy of, of the trees in the autumn time is, is something really special. We've got uh, trees like Russ, for instance, we have to be a little bit careful because it does uh, send suckers out, but we've got liquid ambar, you know, even betula, um, some of the silver birch goes beautiful golden yellow colours. And we've already talked about grasses, but other plants uh, such as Virginia creeper might uh, spread over a, a, an ugly wall. That can go a beautiful scarlet colour in the autumn as well. Asters can still be in flower as well. Um, but as I said before, I don't want us just to think about flowering uh, within a garden to create interest. While the idea of long summer evenings and barbecues and sunbathing might have gone at this time, um, here in the UK now uh, we've got bonfire night tomorrow night, uh, Guy Fawkes night, um, and there's nothing more um, interesting I think in a garden than a fire pit or a good outdoor fire area. You know, this might be sunken, it might be in the, in the corner of the garden, it might be in the foreground of the garden, you know, but um, huddling around a fire um, when the, the temperatures have dipped a little bit um, can be a real great experience for any anybody um, but it can also look good from a distance too if it's designed carefully especially with built-in seating perhaps or perhaps some, just some big boulders you know this can create a real focal point a real real interest um, 
I've just invested in a new uh, garden fire. Um, it's a solo stove, you may or may not have heard of it. it used to have just a quart end bowl, but one of the problems with outdoor fires is they often tend to be very smoky. You know, your clothes end up smelling quite strongly and there's nothing worse than getting smoke in your eye, especially as a child. So solo stove is a smokeless fire, or it's meant to be. Um, once it gets up to temperature, if you use the right kind of fuel, it's a great idea. Um, and actually the, uh, the, the, the flames that come out, the little holes at the top can be really quite mesmerizing. So as autumn drops, really what we're looking at is vibrant foliage and then huddling around the fire, uh, toasting marshmallows. And then as we transition from autumn, the last of the leaves have dropped, we get into winter. And winter is often thought about as one of the hardest seasons uh, for any garden, uh, and with good reason. Um, we don't go out in the garden as much in the winter time, but that doesn't mean we forget about it. Now we have a tradition in our family where on Christmas Eve, I send the wife and kids out into the garden to gather things for the Christmas table. Um, they come back with holly branches with bright red berries on it. Uh, we've got sometimes uh, certain types of ivy. Um, we've got uh, fir cones, mistletoe, you know, these are they're all placed on the table and interwoven around the uh, candles and food and drink and things, and it looks great. Um, but what this highlights is that there is still quite a lot of interest and uh, interesting colours and foliage within the garden in the winter period. And it's worth mentioning that there are plants out there that are really going to create interest. Um, Mahonia japonica, for instance, witch hazel, you know, quite a vibrant uh, colour is that one. We've got Cotone aster, we've got winter jasmine, sarcococca confusa. Um, these are all plants that are going to create quite a lot of interest and in colour and uh, what have you within the garden. And interestingly, um, you may have seen the last video that I did on wildlife gardening. If you haven't, Link is above, don't miss that because it's got some real great tips in there about how we can encourage wildlife into the garden. Um, uses a lot of these plants and what is more Christmassy than a little red robin sitting on top of a, a, a fork in a winter garden? So do check that out. And again, however, we need to think a bit outside the box and it's not just about flowers within the garden. Um, Cornus is a shrub that I think is a great one for a winter garden. Uh, Midwinter fire, for instance, starts off yellow, goes up into red. Um, these are the stems rather than the foliage once all the leaves have dropped. Um, planted in mass, again, can look really good. Um, I've done quite a few gardens where I plant several uh, Cornus, say Elegantissima, it's got a great uh, variegated leaf, but beautiful red stem, um, then a Cornus flavoromea. Um, if you plant three or four of each and put them clo quite close to each other, you get this, um, this, this layering of colors which can look really, really good. And as well as uh, bright colored stems, we can also think about bark, for instance, Acer grisium, um, which has got a really textural bark to it, maybe snake bark or, or coral bark maple. Um, these two can look good as well. And uh, the structural uh, element of a garden is really important. Multi-stem trees, again, we talked about this with, with lighting, but even in uh, the daytime, multi-stem trees and structure. I've, uh, I've got a hazel in my garden that works particularly well. Jack Montii, uh, Betula Jack Montii with the really bright white stems uh, on a really dull day can, can, can look great. And then we need to think about evergreen structure really and ev evergreen shrubs. Uh, I've already talked about holly, but uh, there's lots of other options. Uh, here in the UK, we used to use a lot of boxes uh, for winter gardens. Um, unfortunately with the uh, box moth caterpillar and certainly um, that as well as blight, uh, means that we're not really incorporating boxes so much within gardens nowadays. Um, so we're reverting back to perhaps uh, taxus, or you. Um, we also uh, use Euonymus, Pittosporum, uh, Ilex crenata, you know, these can create uh, domes or hedges that, 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 that can work really well, especially in the snow. And there are plenty of other evergreen plants. Uh, Magnolia grandiflora, for instance, a really tropical looking plant can look great. Um, for tinea, you've got the bright red uh, foliage in the, in, in the springtime, but in the wintertime, Again, a nice evergreen, strong shrub that can be used either as hedging or standalone shrub. Um, and Portuguese laurel, we're using a lot more in the UK here because uh, of it being so drought tolerant, but again, nice evergreen shrub there. And these evergreen shrubs work really well in the summertime because they can act as a foil um, to the, the, the more vibrant planting in front of them, but in the winter time, they can just hold it all together. Um, and another thing I want us to think about, again, moving away from perhaps the plants, is sculpture or garden art. Um, you know, you might not have thought about this uh, within your garden, but it's definitely worth considering. Um, 
David Harbour is a very well-known sculpturist uh, or artist within the UK. He's been featured in the Chelsea Flower Show a number of times, um, often has a stall there as well as being in Main Avenue Gardens. But um, if you haven't quite got the budget for David Harbour, um, it is pretty stunning, but there's lots of other options out there as well. You know, a simple moon gate within a garden can look great, or I found this option uh, on Etsy uh, recently, a Corten uh, sphere and perhaps multiple of these within a flower bed where uh, plants can grow through them uh, uh, other times can look really good. Um, and whereas uh, sculptures can uh, perhaps just be a, a, a bit of a hidden uh, feature um, that you sort of just come across as you're walking through the garden in, in summertime, they can actually become a bit more of the main event in the winter time. Again, you could combine these with water or lighting. Obviously water we tend to uh, avoid in the winter time, but certainly lighting can look really good. And again, uh, same with the structural trees, we can create shadows and, and real interest there. And again, going back to wildlife, don't forget bird feeding and uh, obviously leaving a little bit out for, for, for the birds. Wildlife can create a real interest, certainly if you, um, uh, if you see, like I say, we talked about the birds, for instance, but other creatures might be in the garden that can create a bit of interest and mustn't forget about them. And then we've got the hard landscaping, don't forget that. Um, being a landscaper here or having a landscaping company, I guess I tend to think about that a little bit more. Um, but dividing walls, you know, archways, pergolas, um, sunken seating areas, raised seating areas, these can all create interest in all seasons and form the backbone of any garden. Um, we don't ever want to rely solely on planting or soft landscaping. We need a good balance of both and if they're considered carefully at the initial garden design stage then it's a win-win for everyone. So there we have it, ideas for every season. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give us a like if you have and please do subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that next video. And keep the comments coming, any questions as well, ideas for future videos, they're always welcome. Um, but in the meantime I hope you can get out in the garden in the next week uh, as long as that rain stops here in the UK it's chucking it down at the moment with Storm Kieran but hey ho um, it is the UK uh, otherwise look forward to seeing you again thanks for watching